the simplest explanation of inflation ever. <laughs> Babe Ruth cards. You can use with eggs, you can substitute with anything. What's going on guys, Brandon here. Let's dive into this. So the only Babe Ruth card in existence, hear me out here. If I gave you the only Babe Ruth card, rookie card, excuse me, a rookie card in existence, you might be pretty jacked up about it. I would be. I would venture to guess it's worth a pretty penny, as they say, no pun intended. You looked years and years and years for this one card and you finally found it. The card it truly, truly has infinite price potential and you think you have it made. You're thinking about the generations of your family that you'll pass it down to and the value you just created for your family. You're stoked, absolutely stoked. Then one day, Top's trading card company or Upper Deck comes to you and they say they want to chat. Oh boy. They say they've had a lot of inquiries about Babe Ruth rookie cards. They fielded a lot of calls about people saying that it's not fair and that there's only one in existence and that none of them can get their hands on. It's just, it's just not fair. Unfortunately, most people grow up not being told or understanding that life isn't fair. It's just, unfortunately, that's just not how life works. If you look at the, the, the wild, the nature, nature's laws, the jungle, the ocean, you'll see life not being fair. It is harsh. It is cruel. It's how life works. Life is about working and creating value. Proof of work, not proof of stake. Proof of stake is a world where you just sit back, fat and happy, a recreation of the fiat inflationary system we have now, central banks, oligarchs, just sit back and just type digits and steal wealth from everyone. We are in a proof of work society. Nature is a proof of work world. Unfortunately though, that's not the world we live in anymore. We live in a world of trying to be proof of stake, trying in a world where we're trying to make everything fair and equal outcomes, not fair playing fields, but fair and equal outcomes, trying to dictate everything from on high, centrally planned economies, command and control economies. Instead of worrying about making things an equal playing field, we take the opposite approach. You are stunned. Of course you are stunned. Inevitably, like any good modern zombie company, they cave under the cancellation peer pressure and make the decision to print one trillion more of these Babe Ruth rookie cards. You are listening to them as they try to tell you this and your jaw hits the floor. Understandably, you can feel your stomach doing turns and come up into your throat. You cannot believe what you are hearing, but you better believe in this life we make everything fair and lowering the living standards and rising costs across the board is what we do in this inflationary world. You just learned about inflation real quick. Inflation in one lesson, they might say. Now, the one extremely rare Babe Ruth rookie card that you had now is rendered basically valueless. In one fell swoop, it lost all of its intrinsic value as there are now one trillion and one, one trillion other copies of that card. Nina Turner is one of the best engagement baiters and engagement farmers on Twitter. She's always popping my feed. I've made the, the mistake of actually giving her real answers a few times and she has hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. And she's always saying just ad hominem attacks and just like ridiculous things that make no sense. Some of them do. I say one out of 10 things actually make sense. This is where Bitcoiners come together with everyone in a deflationary crowd and aligns incentives. And maybe even two out of 10. That's where, again, Bitcoin aligns incentives and brings all people together. People that really don't understand business, economics, money at all. She'll just spout random ad hominem attacks. Uh, here, for instance, eggs shouldn't be this expensive. Bread shouldn't be this expensive. Rent shouldn't be this expensive. Wages shouldn't be this low. Well, Nina, this is because we live in an inflationary, broken fiat monetary system that no one questions and we are told to deal with it. Fortunately for you, Nina, there are answers though. This is your life on dollars. So these are the same eggs over the last 40 plus years, 40, 50 years, priced in dollars. Life gets much more expensive, as you can see, just continually rises. Buying the same eggs, I don't think eggs have changed very much. If anything, they've gotten worse because we're feeding the chickens ridiculous things and we're trying to do whatever, who knows? You're paying exponentially more for the same egg. It doesn't get more simple to understand than that. Here though, like we said, the answer, eggs priced in a deflationary monetary asset, Bitcoin, a deflationary money over the past eight years. Life gets much cheaper. You're not only buying more eggs, you're buying farms at this point. And that's going to continue as there's less and less Bitcoin over time and each Satoshi gets more and more valuable. Unlike the dollar where there's more and more dollars and each dollar gets less and less valuable, purchasing you less goods and services. 
see how that's opposite? It is counterintuitive. It's hard to understand because we never have grown up in a deflationary money world. We've only grown up in inflation told you got to deal with it. You got to accept it. That's the only way because it's the people on high that get to extract all the value from all of us like cogs and system, like pods in the matrix where we just work all day and they extract the energy, the time and energy from all of us and they get to benefit from it. Very scary. Now replace this card again with the one American dollar or any other fiat currency you like. We kind of just explained it here, but replace that Babe Ruth card with a dollar. And now you see what's going on. If you only have one in existence, then great. It might hold some value, that Babe Ruth card or that dollar. However, the government came to you and said they're going to print one trillion more of those dollars. You might be kind of upset. That's exactly the system we live in here, where every single dollar you hold is constantly being devalued each and every day as government prints more and more and more of these pieces of paper into existence. Nowadays, this happens even easier by typing digits into a computer, like a chicken just pecking away at the keyboard, into a computer, stealing a fraction of the purchasing power from every single existing dollar. Because your dollar is worth less and less each day, inflation means, here's the big thing, this is the big line, inflation means that it causes you to find more and more and more of these dollars to find and buy the same product and service or service. So that's it. Again, because your dollar is worth less and less each day, inflation means that it causes you to find more and more. You got to find more and more, work harder and work 10 jobs, work three jobs, become better, start more businesses and get on the hamster wheel, spin even faster and to find more of these dollars to buy the same product or service. What did we just show you? The same egg exponentially more over the last 40 years. If you're an inflationary asset, your life gets better and cheaper over time and your living standards go up. So think about that, those two opposing ideas. Inflationary world versus a, versus a deflationary world, a deflationary asset where you're, each Satoshi, each Bitcoin grows in value, buying you more and more goods and services. Your dollars are an inf inflationary world, a fiat currency standard, your dollars get more and more worthless, meaning you need to find more of them to buy the same goods and services. Money is an economic container for your time and energy. You can't just print value or wealth into existence. It must be worked for and earned. So the counterfeiting of that new currency by the governments and central banks must extract value from something or someone else. So those dollars that are already in existence or those other people working like cogs in a pod in the matrix, it's got to extract value from somewhere to give it any value at all. When central banks and governments print currency, they are stealing a fraction of everyone's time and energy that they toiled away from their family and loved ones. So every single dollar printed, new, newly printed steals a fraction of every single dollar in existence. The, the ones in your bank account, that's why you get one cent in your savings account. That's why prices are rising. They're stealing it from you. And that's got to be paid back somehow. So they get to benefit from the people at the money, the currency printer first, right? It's not money. Fiat currency is not money. Only gold, silver, Bitcoin are money. The actual value of currency is our dollars. They're not backed by anything. So it's just currency. So they get to take that currency and spend it first. They get the one that they get to use it. Once it goes into the circulation, all the value starts draining from it. And we have to find more and more of those dollars to go buy the same goods or services. They suck it. So it was, again, when central banks and governments print currency, they are stealing a fraction of everyone's time and energy that they toiled away from their family and loved ones. Remember, your, your money, your, your, your wealth is your time and energy. That's it. So that's what they're stealing from you. They're not just stealing digits or paper dollars or whatever. They're stealing your, your time and energy. You spent away from loved ones, away from your family, away from your passions. They suck it out of your economic tainer, out of your money, as shown here through inflation. This is fiat currencies stealing it. This, your money is your economic containers. You're, if you're holding dollars, you're holding a container with a, a hole in it, an inflationary hole being sucked away to pay for other pet projects and other things that government and global cabal wants to spend on. If you have a finite container like Bitcoin or at the very least gold and silver, you now have a, a, a more sound, a very sound money or a perfectly sound money in Bitcoin where it holds your container and there's no inflation, right? Or, there's, there's more coming into existence, right? But there will only be 21 million. If you divide your whole life by 21 million, you don't have to worry about anything less because they're going to be less. And people are losing some of their Bitcoin over time, meaning it's going to get more and more valuable over time. So that's the difference. They suck it out of your economic container right here and give your new dollars that were just brought into existence to someone or someone deemed more important than you. Generally, politician through a pet project of some type, et cetera, like we just talked about. So these are all the currencies, all the fiat currencies of the world we just talked about, every single one in existence. They're all going to go to zero. They've already all, all lost 99% of their value in the last 110 years, especially the dollar. It's going to lose. Someone was just fighting the other day. How can it lose 99% over the next decade? It's going to lose 99% over the next decade or two. And I said the next decade or two. We just printed, what, 40, 50, 60% of all currency in existence now, just in the last three years? 
So it already went down that much just in a couple of years. You don't think it can go down 99% in the next 10 years? I mean, what are we doing here at the end of the day? I mean, this is just comedy hour. It's comedy hour if you're holding favor dollars and thinking that's going to get you to the finish line and holding that in your retirement accounts and holding that in your savings accounts, thinking that's going to get you here to the, to the finish line where you want to be. This is something I wrote out, and this is why it's so important to understand. These are just containers. Like I said here, these are just containers for your time and energy. You work here, which is just your time and energy, right? And you're pouring it in here to this container, hoping that it's there for you at the end of the day. Again, if you have a fiat currency, it's being diluted while you're sleeping all day long, while you're in the hamster wheel, being diluted and sucked away from you through inflation. Here in a deflationary money, like in Bitcoin, a perfectly finite container, it's a perfect trade, your finite time for a finite asset, a perfect swap. Bitcoin is time and time is Bitcoin. This is not financial advice. This is freedom advice. This is how to escape the system and be outside of the control of oligarchs and you know aristocracies and and these global cabals that are taking this and stealing this from you. They know the game. They know the game through and through. This is why they do what they do. And I believe it was Henry Ford that said, it's, it's well enough that people don't know the monetary system. Because if, if they did, there would be revolution in the morning. This is what no one tells you. As Milton Freeman said, monetary, uh, inflation is a monetary phenomenon anywhere and everywhere. And, and truly it is. It, it's really just currency printing. It's currency manipulation at the end of the day. And people want to get into the demand and supply side. Like, well, if there's a supply side effect and there's a there's a shortage or a disruption, then it causes inflation. No. That's causing maybe a price bump. It causes a, a rise in prices because there's a shortage somewhere. Inflation itself means expansion of the currency supply. That's all it means. That's it. People get into these like nuances because they're trying to hide what's going on. There's a lot of good people that explain it that way, but they don't truly understand what it is. They think it's like a, a dual demand and supply thing. No, it's just an increase in prices. That's just a free market. That's called price discovery. If there's a shortage somewhere or the supply chain is broken or gas costs, gas prices are rising. So it causes expansion of, or uh, it causes the increase in prices. That is a temporary thing. That's something that is just a price rise. It's just a free market figuring out pricing, and it's called price discovery at the end of the day. So don't get confused when people say, well, it's the Putin price hike, and it's, it's a monetary ex um, uh, increase in, in just in supply chains and breaking and things like that. Those are People on both sides say that garbage. That is not true. It's a monetary expansion of the currency supply. That's it. It's printing more dollars than you have in existence. And they're, they're, like I said, this is people on both sides. These are phenomenal people on both sides, actually, that actually just don't understand this. They really don't. Because you think about this, 50, 60 70, you know, years, we have not learned this. No one's taught this in school. People don't learn this. So you truly have to be a true student of money, of currency, of, of, of economics. Really, probably it's more money. Because if you're studying economics, you learn kind of this this bass backwards type of way of, of thinking, right? They don't even teach gold in school. They took it out, as Jim Ricker says, in the, in the 70s, right? So no one understands how this works. This is why this is such a problem and why we have so many problems with inflation and rising costs and no one knows what's going on. This is why I get arguments with people all the time about deflationary money. There's people out there, huge macro addicts, macro people that will argue about, well, well we can't have a deflationary money. We can't have a deflationary, you know, what are you talking about? You don't want lower costs and higher standards of living? That's literally what deflationary money gives you. That's all it is. It means each dollar or each Bitcoin or each ounce of gold increases in purchasing power. It buys you more and more things. It doesn't mean it has to get divided and expanded into more and more units necessarily. It means that it just gets you more. If one gold ounce in the Weimar Republic in Germany bought you a whole city block, a hundred years ago, well, then it might buy you half a block now, or it might buy you 10 blocks of commercial real estate uh, 10 years from now. It just is the, the purchasing power. As Mike Mulney says, people know the price of everything and the value of nothing, right? So what is the value, the purchasing power? We need to know the value of things, not the prices of things. This is the big question. The big question is when you hear governments or central banks say that inflation needs to be 2% a year, or inflation is much higher than we anticipated, now all you need to do is question them. Well, why? We have the explanations here of what's going on and what should happen versus what is happening. So we just need to question them. Vote for people who understand these things, which there aren't many, unfortunately. Number one, why do we need inflation at all? Why do we need 2% stolen from us each year? Why do we need 2% stolen each year or 5%, 10%? And why should prices continually be rising? 
What if what if I said I'm gonna just come and steal 10% of your household items every single year? At 2%, you might not notice. And if I didn't tell you, and that's why they do it that way. But at 5%, maybe 10%, now you're starting to notice. Now you're like, what the heck's going on? We have 10% less stuff in our house uh, at the end of the year. And then if it's 10% again the next year, you're like, what the heck is going on? That's why. That's why they have to be very careful. And they only want to steal a little bit so you don't notice. And that's why they also mess with the CPI. It's really 15, 20% CPI right now if you do it how we measured it 40 plus years ago. But now they're telling you it's only six because they stripped out a lot of the important things, you know, rent, you know, things like that, food, energy. They steal out or they they castrate some of the, the numbers and, uh, you know, hedonic adjustments, they call it. You know, like, ooh. So they, they play with the numbers to make you not realize and obfuscate truth and reality. And number three, why not have deflation each year? Why can't we have that? Why can't my dollar buy more each year? Why can't I grow wealthier each year? Why, can my, why can't my standard of living go up each year? Number four, can the system be stopped or runaway cost and the increasing wealth gap be stopped? So again, inflation causes an increasing wealth gap. Only the people at the top, this is why the 1%, they know what's going on. They know they have to buy assets to try to hedge inflation or outrun inflation, this, this theft of your time and energy. So they understand that, but the average person either doesn't know that or can't do it. You know, they, don't, they have too much going on, they don't have the knowledge, it's too difficult, there's too much going on. I mean, heck, most people can't even get into the right investments because they're not credited investors. They don't have enough, you know, Wall Street and the, the global cabal have capped what you can invest in. The best investments, a lot of times, the average person can't get in because they don't have a net worth of over a million dollars. I mean, think about the, the lunacy of that. And if not, if you can't answer these questions, then what can fix it? Because there are answers out there. We just showed you the answers earlier, obviously. What could fix it? This is why my mind has gone from fixing the wealth gap, which I believe is the biggest threat to humanity. The increasing wealth gap will cause more and more unrest. We already know that. It's, just, it's historical. And I know that everyone can go to work and earn money. But what kind of money are we earning? I can teach people all day long about real estate, about getting wealthy and building businesses and things like that. But most people aren't going to do that. Like I just said, most people won't be able to do that. You know, the time, energy, the wherewithal, the resources, they won't be able to do it. Right, so I'm only going to affect 5%. The last 10 years, I've been trying to teach people and helping people do that, but it doesn't matter. And that's where the last handful of years, I've realized, oh my gosh, I understood the money part, but we actually have Bitcoin that can fix this truly. And someone at McDonald's or someone at CEO of Exxon all has the same opportunity to save more than they spend and save in a deflationary asset in Bitcoin, a true money, the truest money that can actually increase their wealth over time. All the same. And people like Nina don't have to be worrying. You know, Nina might be out of a job of ad hominem attacks and just trying to bait people into engagement on Twitter. However, she'll have to go actually get a real job. She'll actually have to provide value, like we say here, right? They'll actually have to provide value and work, create value in the world. Instead of just building up hundreds of thousands of followers for you know, stoking their emotions through you know, baiting them and engagement farming on Twitter. Actually has to work, actually has to go get in the world and swing a hammer. The hospital administrators, there are a lot of the lawyers, uh, business people, MBAs, they're gonna be out swinging hammers because they actually have to provide work and value instead of grifting off the system. That's truth, right? We actually have things manufactured, we worry about things manufactured and made in USA, well guess what? We're gonna have a lot of that in the next 10, 20 years as people have to get, actually get back to work. We're going to automate things. We're also going to have people out of these other overblown, oversupplied industries and back into producing food, agriculture, building, manufacturing, farming. It's coming one way or another. So I appreciate you, your time and energy. Please, please share this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you got out of this. I appreciate your time and energy. It's the most important asset we have. Finite time for a finite asset. Bitcoin is time. Time is Bitcoin. It's not financial advice. It's freedom advice. I appreciate you more than anything. Please, like I said, Someone who needs this, someone who might need to hear this, please, please, please share this so they can see what is going on and I'm trying to break this down as simple as possible so people understand what's going on and get this truly so we can end this, this tyranny, this craziness of rising prices through fiat currencies and our time and energy being stolen for us and we can get back to this, a deflationary world, an inflationary money where life gets cheaper and cheaper and your living standards go up. See you on the next one.